Hello, everybody. This is Badger Wild, and we are back with another Space Engineers ship classification video. This time, ladies and gentlemen, we are getting to the big ships. These are the ships that everybody wants in their fleet. This is the ship that y'all want to show up and start laying down the smack down. This is the start of those classes of I am done effing around and you're about to find out <laughs> type of classes. And that is we're starting with the Humble Cruiser. So without further ado, let's get started here. So the Cruiser, a much, much bigger ship than the Frigate, the Destroyer, or even the Assault Ship. Frigate Cruisers are going to be very large vessels. There's a reason for this because cruisers normally operate in the deep waters much longer than any other ship at times. Uh, frigates and stuff, they usually go from point to point B. Cruisers are kind of your deep ocean patrol craft. They're kind of like the Corvette of the big ships. The difference is, unlike the Corvette, yes, they can be fast, but they are able to handle any problem they deal with. The, the idea of the cruiser is it's going to be by its lonesome. It cannot rely on a fleet all the time. Unlike a frigate or a destroyer, which will almost always be within a fleet, unless they have their rare occurrences. So the cruiser is sort of a jack of all trade ship. It is also the first ship in the capital class, <clears throat> which also usually means that these are diplomatic vessels as well. Uh, they can have diplomatic facilities, things of that nature. But the main thing about cruisers is they've got the firepower. As you can see on this one, we've got a lot of missiles. This is technically qualified as a missile cruiser. So it has a ton of missile systems built into it to defend itself. I don't understand this type of missile system here. <laughs> it just seems weird. But you'll also notice it has a quite an impressive point defense system to defend itself with. It also has a set of doors here for storing other ships and things of that nature. So it can store a pretty decent amount of auxiliary craft it has a good point defense system it has a good missile defense system and a decent amount of armor they're also very big now uh size wise with the ships it depends on how your lore is going you can have really big cruisers you can have really small cruisers like right here probably the biggest cruiser that's on here is this nice big blue one here i can't remember what it's called and the smallest one i know this is a hell gas cruiser that's meant to be like a Helgraston. So, or from, uh, what is the, what is the game? Kills them. <clears throat> so, the thing about cruisers, like I said, is they are kind of where Corvettes and the medium class vessels, like the light class Corvette, it, it has to do a lot of things because it is patrolling mostly, but it, it does deep water patrolling where the Corvette is the, is the largest of the patrol class ships next to like gunboats and patrol boats and things of that nature. It's the first ship that's in the patrol class. Uh, the cruiser is the smallest, usually the smallest ship in the LART capital class ships. <clears throat> and it does mostly patrol work is what it's going to be doing. So it's going to be out there on its lonesome. It has to be able to respond to a myriad of threats. Unlike the Corvette, it's not a bully. Uh, it can basically go out there and it can pick fights with ships its size or even sometimes fleets. Now, is a cruiser better than a fleet? No. A fleet of frigates is far more effective than a cruiser. What we're saying is the cruiser has to be a jack of all trades because it's going to find itself out in the ocean by itself most of the time. It's a bit of a lone wolf ship. Can it fleet action up? Yes. Every ship that we talk about in this classification, they can all be fleeted up. Every ship that we're going to talk about later is going to be able to fleet up. And they're always better in fleets because the more ships you have, you can have teamwork. And like the old saying says, teamwork makes the dream work. So, <clears throat> like I said, the cruiser has to be able to do a lot of things. So, unlike the frigates and destroyers, which are somewhat masters, and they're, they're jack-of-all-trades in classification masters of their classes. The cruiser is a jack of all trades and a jack of all trades in its class. So in, in both aspects. So we have, like I said, similarities here with all these ships. You look here, you know, we got defenses, guns, ability to carry some ships. Look over here with this cruiser here. We have a cargo bay for assaults. 
We've got a massive point defense system. We've got a lot of missiles on this ship to do serious damage. This one's a little more gun-centric, but you can see it's got that. It's got a forward launch bay here for to be able to send out fighters and defensive stuff. It is not an assault ship. It is a cruiser because of its size. There's also a reason why cruisers are so big. Uh, on the oceans, the bigger your ship is, the easier it can handle larger waves. It's just how it is. See here on the Hellgas cruiser, we've got missiles, we've got guns, and this one here does not appear to have any type of way of holding it. I thought it had something because it has that thing in the back, but apparently... Oh, no, here we are. We've got a small cargo bay here, probably to drop a small ship out of and let it come out. Same thing with this Halo Type 1. This is not the Pillar of Autumn. For those of you wondering, I don't know what it is. If you want a video on it, I will do a video on it. But as you can see here, we've got on the side, we have a we have a ship bay. We've got point defenses. We've got missiles. And another thing, just like destroyers, you can have forward-facing missile systems to do maximum damage or rail guns. These are older model ships, so there's not a whole lot of the new stuff that we have involved in this but you're getting an idea of how our cruiser works now back to the size thing the reason why cruisers are usually so big a lot of times is because the bigger the ship out in the ocean the easier it is to handle the waves a similar realization happens or a, a similar thing works when you are doing ships in space because here's the thing when you're doing a massive ship in space it makes sense and even NASA says this kind of makes sense when you're building, you know, shipbuilding. Because the ship in question has to be able to withstand what's called radiation. Out in the wilds of space, you get pummeled with radiation all the time. This is why a lot of people don't know this, but NASA astronauts actually get free cancer treatment for the rest of their life. Because they are being, just going up to the atmosphere, even as protected as they are in the upper ionosphere they are still being bombarded with gamma radiation, uh, radioactivity, solar radiation, all that stuff, especially when they're going out in, in spacewalks with very minimal shielding. So if they develop cancer, they basically get cancer treatment for the rest of their lives. Like they get the best medical care, all the, all the experimental drugs, you name it, they get it. Um, so when you build a bigger ship, the easiest way to shield yourself from radiation like that for long term, especially if you're doing a cruiser, Lore-wise is, you know, just give your cruiser a whole bunch of radiation shielding. You just make it bigger. With a bigger ship, you can put bigger engines on it. You can have more cargo space. You can actually transport more people. So that's that's one of the things why cruisers start getting bigger. And which is why now we're in this category of bigger ships. Because the cruiser, like I said, is the jack of all trades of this. The next two ships we're going to be talking about, they're the ones that are going to be masters of a specific role. And uh, that role is either going to be destroying other ships... Or deploying other ships so yeah but the cruiser like i said the cruiser can deploy its own support craft it can in sci-fi deploy fighters to an extent but it shouldn't be like a carrier you shouldn't see swarms of ships coming at a target um another thing people probably also wonder is what is the difference between a battle cruiser and a regular cruiser a, well really a battle cruiser you got to think Iowa class battleship. So you're, you're kind of getting to that aspect of it. And I probably should do a video on the differences between the Iowa classes, why it was such a revolutionary design because the Iowa class is a very rep was just awesome, which is one of the reasons why the, the Yamato committed seppuku once it realized it could, it was going to have to fight the Iowa. By anyway, folks, <clears throat> hope you guys enjoyed the video. And this kind of clears up what cruisers are. Like I said, they are, the ultimate jack of trade jack of all trade ship this is the ship that comes in that kind of can do everything but it must not be a master at it. it should have good point defenses it should have good guns it should be able to damage another ship or even take another ship out of similar size or smaller and it should be able to launch some assault crews uh basically this is just an added bonus to a fleet if you have a frigate a destroyer say say you've got a frigate uh, type of destroyer and an assault ship and a fleet. If you throw the cruiser in there, the cruiser can actually augment the firepower or something. So if you got a screening frigate, a destroyer, uh, the ship can either add its point defense to defending the other two ships, or it can jump in with a destroyer and take out a ship that's trying to threaten the other ships, or it can also aid in the assault with the assault ship. Uh, it can just add some support fire to it. 
And that's what you need to kind of try and make a well-balanced, well-rounded vessel that will cost a little bit more than your frigates, but it will still be able to get the job done when you need it to. Anyway, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Hope this clarifies a few things. Uh, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments. Love answering y'all's questions. Love talking to you about these ships because they, these have been some fun conversations I've had over the course of doing this series. And I'm getting to the last two ships and I'm kind of bummed because these last two ships are going to be, these last two videos are going to be done and I'm not, I don't know what I'm going to do next. So I've got to come up with something that's equally as entertaining as this for you guys to want to watch on the channel. So I've got some ideas playing around with some stuff, but, uh, hopefully we can come up with something cool before long. Anyway, folks, thank you all for watching. This has been Badger Wild saying, stay safe, stay frosty. Don't also don't forget. We have a rumble, uh, which is now putting up our videos regularly. Uh, I also have a subscribe star, which is pretty much just a tip jar. If you guys want to go over there, drop a dollar, fine by me helps out. And, uh, yeah, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe if you're new. And as always, stay safe, stay frosty. See you guys in the next video. Goodbye for now.